Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, we are once again back again playing some Assassin's Creed Origins on Xbox One X, playing at beautiful 4K resolution. If you guys didn't catch my first kind of preview of early gameplay, I actually did like four or five episodes about a month ago. This one worked perfectly. Whoa, 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 perfectly. Tell me. Tell me. Anyways. So, yeah, Ubisoft had another <laughs> preview event. And this is why, this is why I think this game is going to be good. Because history has told me that the more preview events that games have, especially with the Assassin's Creed games, it just means the game is going to be good. The last time that I had this many preview events for any Ubisoft game was Assassin's Creed 4 Ready Black Flag. You, Neb, are young, and your legs are strong. Perfect for my needs. A pigeon arrived not long ago. I sent Ruya to fetch it, but she is so unreliable. Probably batting her eyes at the Master of Arms. If I see her... Never mind her. I want my letter. Run up to the pigeon tower and fetch it. All news is important to us these days. All right, Stuart. I will see what I can do. My legs be strong because I squat every day. Like one of those Instagram squat chicks. <laughs> but anyways, so yeah, I really do think that this is going to be a good game and going to get the uh, series back kind of on the track. A little bit more on that later. So we have to get the FTC bullshit out of the way because it's just the world we live in today with after the whole CSGO lotto thing. Everyone's really anal about this. So uh, the event was held in San Francisco about three weeks ago. It was a long time ago seems like ages ago and Ubisoft provided my flight and accommodations for a one night stay uh, they are not paying me to make this video I'm not getting paid this is like the border of the demo as you can see by that black wall there's not Eva behind it that's just the border um, and this is new right here too this is something really cool I just pressed this I was trying to f figure out the controls and they, there's actually a day and night cycle now so you can choose to play the majority of the side missions or the missions I don't think any of the main missions because they need to take place uh, during a specific time uh, but don't quote me on that but you can swap through the day and night cycle it's an ability that you'll get to see a little bit later and as you can see right here this time around I'm actually able to show you guys the majority of the menu the last preview session that I played I had to edit out edit out the map I had to edit out all the inventory stuff the quest lines and everything uh, so uh, it's, this video should flow a little bit more smoothly just because uh, they released a little bit of the restrictions of everything as you can see the map right here so yeah um, I'm not getting paid any sort of way to make this video I'm allowed to say exactly what I want my real true life impressions of it and I wouldn't honestly have it any other way to be honest with you because I think that's the best policy when you're doing an early game preview the um, I've done them before and they just don't the videos don't turn out very natural because you have to send them in for like review and everything and they want you to say something else or say something a little bit different it's just a bunch of it's just a headache so I love doing being able just to say what I want I could tell you this game's absolutely garbage and you shouldn't buy it but I'm not gonna tell you that because I actually do think uh, like back on the train that I was talking about a little bit earlier this is gonna be a really good game because they seem to they're confident with it which is what has upset them? Ubisoft seems to be very confident in this game, and that's shown by the fact that um, they're allowing all these early preview sessions. And this one was actually the longest one they've ever offered. I actually got to play over four hours of the game, and I say that kind of loosely because they literally had to pry me off the recording station because I was the first session of, of the day, and there's another one after. I'm trying to practice and try and remember the controls here and I literally stayed until they they actually said you have to get off now we're prying you off I, I, they were first nice about it and then they're like okay you have to get off now so I played probably four and a half hours of the game and that's a huge chunk of a game and exploring everything and 
just getting a general feel of it. So for this session we got to play one main mission. I can show you the first half of the main mission and I can't show you the second half because it's held back by embargo. But Where's the body? I am able to show you guys a shit ton of world exploration as well as pretty meaningful side quests in my personal opinion. So um, yeah, it was well, it was a time well spent and I definitely tried to make the most of it. So right here I was trying to remember how to activate the pseudo detective eagle vision. That's not really eagle vision anymore. An ill omen. How did that charcoal get spilled? Which I think is a good choice. It kind of detective vision was cool. Ego vision was cool for the very first time, but I think it's a really outdated system now. Um, making the entire screen change is not my cup of tea. And random backflip into a hay barrel, cause I'm a bala. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really glad that they decided to tone it down a bit. It was probably one of my main criticisms from Watch Dogs Two. When someone went over it. The tech vision was just way too in your face. So, still fresh. These types of investigations you're gonna find a couple times throughout the entire demo um, that I played. Uh, it's basically you have in order to you have you have the gold ones which will give you the most investigation process, and then the white ones will still give you investigation progress as well, uh, but it would just be a little bit slower. And then these ones are marked off for items. Okay, so for this first part one of this gameplay session, I always like to have themes for each one of these preview videos where I try to nail a specific point or reinforce what I'm trying to translate to you guys in this video of my general impressions. For this one, we're going to go big. We're going to talk about what I think this game is going to score in terms of a review score, its Metacritic score, quote unquote. I'm more of an open critic guy myself. I like things to be even for everyone. Um, I did this with la last year with Watch Dogs 2 after all the preview events that I went to it. Uh, not to toot my horn, I actually was fairly close to the Metacritic score. I cannot leave you here. I will take you back to Pelias for the proper rights. Poor Ruia. If you had only known how to make such a leap. What did you get yourself into? Beasts with the faces of men prey on the weak and powerless. We cannot simply show our bellies to the jackals that plague our land. Jackal, 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 is jackal. It wasn't right the first time. By the gods, Ruya, what happened? She was thrown to her death from the pigeon tower. Your letter. Why was she killed? That is the badge worn by Dimnos, our master of arms. Why did she have it? I will find out soon enough. Poor, poor girl. May you walk in the field of reed. Yeesh, it's hard to stay on track and keep your thoughts in order when you have to shut up every time someone needs to talk for long periods of time so um, what we're gonna encounter right now is we're gonna go beat up the massive arms because he's a dick <laughs> I'm looking for Ruya why would I know when perhaps because she has your badge shit well she was just an Egyptian dog no matter why did you do it truth I didn't mean to kill her only teach her a lesson for her insolence. She refused to read a letter for me. You must confess to Pelias. I suppose you want the same fate as Ruya. You stupid Egyptian. I'll teach you the same lesson she learned. Come. Try. All right. Just fair warning. You're about to witness some very cringeworthy gameplay for the first couple seconds of this encounter because I almost forgot how to fight. <laughs> it's just had like a moment where I forgot how to fight uh, between the last preview session and this gameplay session. It happens. It happens when you play 
games in between other games. Just trust me. Anyways, I'm not going to talk too much about the combat gameplay because I'm probably going to give you guys an update impressions of that. And once again, that dedicated video. I kind of want to stay on track of what I think I'm telling you guys what overall well, how good this game is gonna be because uh, that's probably the most important thing that you guys are interested in and in terms of a review score I think that this game will score in the high eights it will not probably reach a nine uh, mainly because first there are a lot of that was savage but <laughs> damn I, this is the first time I'm rewatching this gameplay um, that's what you mentioned First root off, I don't think it's a 9, uh, in my personal opinion, anything above a 9. And I also think that it's going to be dragged down artificially by hipster reviewers who just want to give it probably a 7 just because it's... Ooh, look at this. This is the uh, inventory screen that I didn't I had to edit out last time for you guys. Yeah, it's good. You guess haters. The series has been so long, there's just been... I'll admit there have been way too many games and people are just gonna hate on it just because it's another Assassin's Creed game. That's just the truth. That's not, that is the honest truth of the matter. Um, but I think for legitimate, respectable quote unquote uh, video game review sites is probably gonna score in the high eights and most likely um, in terms of a magic credit score I'd say between an 8.6 and 8.7 which is a solid game. Um, could it be improved on? Absolutely. There are stuff that when I played it, I noticed right away. Um, I personally would have tweaked just a little bit more. Um, but I've had this conversation with a lot of people in the industry, both amateur people like myself as well as professional media, quote unquote. And it's just video games are a business. And in terms of. Let's just get through here. Was it Dimnos? Yes. He killed Ruia out of base cruelty. And he died because he thought I was also less than a person. What a senseless tragedy. She was a smart girl with a good heart. Well, I like the HUD in this game. Every time you complete a mission or you level up, your like screen explodes with gold. It's kind of like Destiny 2-esque when you hit like a bright anagram or you level up, your entire screen just blows up. Um, but yeah, what I was saying is my conversations with video game people in the industry, uh, what we have to realize is despite the fact that we all hold our favorite franchises near and dear to our heart, very close to the chest, the video game industry is a business, it's exactly that, an industry. And I had the same issues and I had the same kind of mental breakdown a little bit earlier this year with the release of Mass Effect Andromeda. Um, that game was pretty much doomed to fail right off the bat. It was made by like D-level Bioware when and the A team from Bioware is currently working on Anthem. And that game is just, it was doomed to fail right at the beginning. And I'm, I was a huge fan of the series and it just made me extremely sad. And I think that translated through my review of the game. And it's just... Racket, auntie. You will just make the hippos excited. Or call the bandits back. Is, is that him? No, not Makita. Neb. You look strong and carry yourself without fear. Can you help a poor farmer? Your friend was killed by a hippo. Yes. The beast rampage slaughtered many. Yesterday, we were attacked by bandits. In their wake, they disturbed these hippos and drove them into our fields. The gods seem content to peace on us. We cannot harvest the crops, nor can we put the dead to rest with the hippos in our fields. Let me help you collect the dead. We about to play Hungry Hungry Hippos, boys and girls. The so the whole point of this side quest is part of this part, anyways. You have to clear, find the dead bodies of. I, I don't know why those guys just decided to have a fight. Um, you need to find the bodies, but this area is kind of infested with savage hippos. Um, those hippos, man. They put up a much better fight in this game session than they did in my previous episode <laughs> where I basically just murdered him in the water. You get a pretty feisty one. Um, do you know what these side quests, the how the side quests are set up in this game, it really it gave me the feeling of like Horizon Zero Dawn and like the angle they chose as 
the people are talking. It just gave me a very Horizon Zero Dawn feel of how the side missions and missions were set up. Um, which was the fantastic game, how Horizon Zero Dawn was. Now that game was a 9. Um, back to my original thought. So, of money <laughs> and the video game industry. It's just something you gotta accept. Uh, I'll give you guys an example. So, Ubisoft could either, from a business perspective, take 6 years to make one Assassin's Creed game that will score 9 and sell pretty good. It will definitely sell if it hit that 9 mark, especially. All the workers will hit their nice bonuses if they get a nice Metacritic score. Or they can take the exact same amount of time, that 6 year span, and make two separate games. Uh, two different Assassin's Creed games, which will just sell a ton more just by volume alone and releasing them separately. It's just the way it is. It's just, this honestly, it's, it's not, I don't like it. I, I honestly don't like it. I would love for them to really make, spend a lot of time and you can't parry a hit my way. I would love them to take their time and release an amazing game every single time. That Grand Theft all of quality, you know, where everyone knows that the game is just going to be amazing. That rock star pedigree. Um, but as we know, based on our experiences with Ubisoft, they kind of, the way that Ubisoft approaches it is that it's kind of like, Ubisoft approaches video game making in kind of, I guess the best metaphor I can tell you guys is like an assembly line, basically. They have multiple studios all across the world working on different aspects of one single game. Each studio is working on something specific and nothing is made in one single studio at a time. And that's why when you beat a Ubisoft game, at the very end the credits are like a half hour long because they had so many studios kind of with their hands in the pot. The last one, I think. And Mikator not among them. What will I do now? Thank you, Neb. Their souls will now rest in peace. Who is this Meketra, your aunt mourns? Our protector. Brave and strong like you, he would chase away fierce animals or the bandits who plague us. I guess there is no one left who can keep us safe. Such a curse upon all of Egypt, it seems. Where do these bandits roost? There is a canyon. I would take you there, but it is far too dangerous. Also, someone must deal with the dead. Of course, I will find it. The bandits are known as the Hungry Great Ones. May the gods protect you. This assembly line of video game making is also why, generally, anytime you see a new mechanic in one Ubisoft game, it kind of comes into other Ubisoft games as well, such as the drones from Watch Dogs, as well as the Ghost Recon Wildlands, as well as the eagle that flies over above from Far Cry, which also made its way back into this game as well. Um, the tower scenes from the original Assassin's Creed that went into Far Cry 3 and 4. Uh, it's just it's just how they that's how they do it. They once they invest in something, they they make full use of those assets. <laughs> they, they they really go for it. But that being said, despite the gross amount of recycling at some points and the multiple hands that each game goes through, I personally think probably they are one of the better video game makers in the industry uh, right now of just constantly pumping out new games at decent quality, not the greatest quality, not uh, industry leading, but definitely not the worst. Uh, and I guess that's kind of how I'm going to wrap it up right here in my general thoughts. This game is going to be good. I almost truly in my heart, I want to guarantee it, but I can't guarantee it because if, I, if I'm wrong, I don't want to sound like a liar. But I honestly do believe that Assassin's Creed Origins will be a fantastic game that really gets the series um, back on the rails and back on the tr track of basically a franchise that kind of just came out last generation. It's not like it doesn't have this. Oh, this is like a sniper bow that I had, which is really cool. There's different perspectives of how you can shoot a bow. There's a sniper one, there's like a regular bow, there's a quick fire one, and there's like one that you shoot like five arrows at the same time. It's really cool. Um, uh, this is, if you, in the 
respect of video games as a whole as as well as other franchises this franchise isn't that old to be honest with you and there have been a lot of bumps along the way but at the same time there have been a lot of cool stuff along the way as well um, and I think that this one is gonna be uh, a positive in terms of what people think when they think of the Assassin's Creed franchise um, so yeah closing I think that this game is probably gonna be a mid to uh, high eight uh, not a 9, but definitely not a 7. And I don't think there are going to be any groundbreaking bugs or missing textures as we found in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I didn't, and there weren't even any load times either that were a problem. So, uh, take that, my opinion, with a grain of salt and for what, what you want, basically. And yeah, I'm going to be bringing you guys a lot more. I kind of did this backwards and against traditional ways people would do this. People will usually kind of the normal way to do it would be to give you my piece by piece thoughts and then give you a final score of my final thoughts but i'm going to give you guys my final thoughts first because we're going to try something a little bit different but anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed uh this really re look into this early gameplay footage of assassin's creed origins i'm going to be bringing you guys a ton more um so hopefully you guys are looking forward to that and are going to enjoy it and one thing that i will leave you guys with is when you have these rescue missions you have to kill everyone first because the NPCs are idiots and they will not sneak out of the base. They will just run straight for the gate uh, and then they'll get attacked and protect them. It's just, just a nightmare. Um, I, those, those white flares are just indicators of uh, that if people will see you if you kind of stay there. It's not any sort of visual glitch. I'm not too keen on it. I kind of wish they would have done a little bit better job because I find it's a little bit distracting, but it is what it is. Anyways, um, look forward to more Assassin's Creed uh, origin stuff in the future. Very future. Near future. And I'll see you guys next time, right? As always, have a fast day. Go! You are a good hurry. These bandits bleed like rats. Thank you. But why did you save me? Your aunt spoke of your desperate straits. I would free any unjust captive, but the plight of a protector is something I cannot ignore. You are a Medjai. We are of the same brotherhood. Yes, I must hurry home. The war chief, Fat Homer, took the hungry great ones on a raid. You move like a lion. Would you help me stop them? <laughs> What are you doing? 
doing? Ketra, I think we are done. You fought like a lion yourself. I have learned much from you. You've made me a better protector. Egypt needs more people like you. The land needs more people like us. I will sing songs of our battle to my aunt to remember this day. Ha. Huh. Nachter hier an Beck. <lacht> <lacht> 